pre-warned some of my friends, you know, the kind of content that, just so they, they kind of know what they're expecting. 1969. We meet in the library after hours. I bring sleeping bags. We have the most amazing sex among the shelves. I'm on another planet. The opportunity to share our experiences with each other has been mm. phenomenal and, and mm. sharing it with the audience. We talk until 4 a.m. He picks me up and carries me to his bed. He is a very gentle lover. It should be talked about more easily. It's, it's just, you know, it's such a precious part of life. All the sex I've ever had is a 90-minute performance featuring six seniors over the age of 65 talking about their entire sex lives from their birth to present day. It's a very special edition for Sydney World Pride, the first time that we've ever had a cast purely composed of members of the LGBTQIA plus community. 1970. I am 10. We're watching WWE with Big Daddy and all these guys. <laughs> I look at their crotches. <laughs> the production starts in 1948 with Sylvia, who is our oldest born cast member, and we travel through until 2023. We talk about the famous 1978 first Mardi Gras, the AIDS epidemic, battery operated vibrators now becoming a thing. So really a huge span of history. A librarian at university tells me about the Women's Liberation Center. The most active in the liberation movement are the lesbians. The reason why I want to be part of the show is because I knew that very few uh, radical lesbian feminists would choose to be. And I feel that it's very important that we're visible. I know sex is a bit of a tricky topic, um, but I still thought I'd give it a go. Each person was interviewed three times first 25 years, second 25 years of your life, third 25 years of your life. Then they had to edit it. Then, then we said the sex is okay. So when we write the script, each cast member gets to see their own stories first. And once the cast members are very happy with their individual stories, that's when we intertwine them all together and then do a full read through with the entire cast. Michael and I are in a sauna in Tel Aviv. I go off to a side room with somebody. Michael wants to join. I tell him, no. <laughs> Three Sisters Social Group put on a fancy dress party. Me in a kilt is quite a hit. They are building like strata of memories between the participants. Somebody can say a key word or a key moment. Mardi Gras party, Warden Pavilion. You just be flooded with memories. <laughs> It's really fantastic being able to do the show in Darlinghurst because so much of Sydney's queer history has taken place within two city blocks of here. This is Taylor Square. I was here for the first Mardi Gras parade, demonstration, Stonewall Memorial in 1978. For sex is the political for our generation. Um, because it was one of the barriers we had to kick over to find our way to freedom. 1978. I joined the melee at Hyde Park. To the cross! At the cross, silhouettes of bodies against bright searchlights are flying through the air in both directions. A senior sergeant who knows me threatens my life. I throw up. I dodge the police. For the first time this year, I don't get arrested. <laughs> For me personally, one of the most important things was that it started me seeing the bigger picture in terms of myself. 1982. I see reports of strange diseases in the backs of foreign newspapers. It's been really empowering in the way that I think about the past and think about the people I know or have known. 1989. I think Robbie's got it, so I must have. So who gives a It has brought up some really powerful emotions amongst us and I think we've all bonded really strongly through the whole experience. The great thing about this show is 
It's not called all the jobs I've ever had. It's not called all the places I've ever lived. It is purely based around their sex, but through sex, we can learn so much about somebody. I had two guys come up to me after a show thanking me for what I'd done in the past, which mm. sort of took my breath away. It's really quite essential to show younger queer people what came before us. We really need to celebrate and learn from it and realize the absolute struggle that our community has gone through for us to be here today, to be able to live the lives that we are living.